Are you struggling to find a great AV receiver for your home theater system? Well, we have done a lot of videos speaking about some of the best AV receivers. We have even compared most of these models in our playlist, which you can check using the link above. But one of the biggest step that I feel needs to be shared with all of you is the seven step method to select a AV receiver. And in today's video, I am exactly going to do that. Now, before we begin, don't forget that our next live session is happening on 14th of December, Thursday at 7.30 p.m. So those of you who have still got a lot of questions in their mind, want to ask whether this particular package is great for my room, then I need you guys to be there at 7.30 p.m. on 14th of December, Thursday, because it's going to be a one hour hell of a discussion with all of you guys answering so many questions as well as discussing most of the trends and sharing some of the best products of 2023. So make sure to hit the subscribe button right now with the notifications on so that you get a reminder about our live session. Moving on to selecting a AV receiver in seven simple steps. The first step is to understand that how many number of channels are you looking to connect to this AV receiver. For instance, if you are building a 5.1 home theater, then you need a five channel AV receiver. If you are building a 5.1.2 Dolby Atmos setup, then you need a seven channel AV receiver. If you are looking for more number of channels like 7.1.2 or 5.1.4, then you will, you will need 9 channel AV receiver and subsequently it will go on. So the very first step that you need to do right is to select the number of channel of AV receivers which will complement the number of channel of your speakers. The second step is extremely easy because in this step, you want to know that if your AV receiver has a compatibility with the kind of formats that you need in your home theater system. For instance, if you are looking to build a Dolby Atmos setup, then you would want to know whether the AV receiver has got Dolby Atmos as one of the supported audio formats. Similarly to those of you who have got the video quality as one of the most important aspect in the home theater, you would want to know whether your AV receiver has got 4K, 8K pass through and it has got the support for HDR10 as well as HDR10 plus formats. And to those of you who are into gaming, you would want to know whether your AV receiver has got the required modes or supports for all the gaming features like auto low latency, variable refresh rate and much more. Now the third step is very very crucial because in this step what you have to figure out is the kind of speakers that you will be connecting this AV receiver with and the power compatibility of these speakers. Now I know at this point most of you would get stuck because you will see the speakers showing 150 watts of output power but the AV receiver that it is getting connected to is mostly having 100 watts, 80 watts as the power output. So don't go by the numbers of the specifications. Try to believe much into the dynamics of it. For instance, if you're looking to connect a speaker, which is 150 watts, you're not going to draw all the 150 watts of power. For your room, for your kind of throw distance, you may be using not more than 30 to 50% of the power output. And if your AV receiver supports that, then you can go ahead and use that AV receiver. One key thing here to note is that your speakers need to be bought first or selected first because the speaker brand and the connection of that to the amplifier is going to determine your entire sound experience. And in this case, if your speakers are very, very bright, you want an amplifier or an AV receiver which will reduce or mellow it down a little bit. Similarly, if your speakers are very, very warm, then you need an amplifier or an AV receiver which brings a little more forward sound from the speakers. The fourth step is about understanding the kind of inputs and outputs that we need in this AV receiver. For instance, if you're looking at Apple TV or PlayStation connection, one of the latest models, then in that case, you will need an HDMI 2.0 version compatibility AV receiver in the input port. Similarly, if you're looking to connect the AV receiver with your TV, which has got EARC and has got Dolby Atmos output, then make sure to buy an AV receiver which has also got EARC HDMI output port. And to those of you who are looking to connect a turntable or a vinyl player to it, then you will also need a phono output to this AV receiver. Now the fifth point is very, very important because this is going to determine how the AV receiver is going to program and make the speaker sound in your particular area. Because in this step, what we need to figure out is that what kind of calibration software I need to have in my AV receiver. Now we all know by now that Dirac is one of the most celebrated and one of the best software that you can have in the AV receiver. 
Having said that, there are some other softwares as well, which are very, very good. For instance, you get Odyssey in Denon and Marantz. You get Vipow, which is Yamaha parametric acoustic optimizer, which is in Yamaha. Then you have got ARC, which is in Anthem. Then you have got MCACC in Pioneer and AccuEQ in the Onkyo models. Now, all of these have their own pros and cons. So make sure to check them online and to also check that what kind of speakers will work with what kind of better room calibration software. The sixth step is all about smart home integration. Now, this is a very, very important step because in today's times, we don't want to control the equipment using the remote control. You either want a mobile application of it or you simply want to get it onto automation so that you can say a command to Alexa or to Apple Siri or to Google and the AV receiver can do a job of turning on itself or shifting the input as well. And that's why the smart home integration is very crucial feature in case you are doing home automation or have an Alexa device in the home. The seventh step is very, very important because this is about future upgrading because we all know that most of our home theaters go on for five to minimum 10 years. And in that case, your AV receiver needs to have all the possible compatibility to any future upgrade. For instance, if you're look, if you're buying a home theater AV receiver to connect with your floor standing home theater package and this floor standing speakers, you want to use in stereo mode, but not with the amplifier of the AV receiver, but with a separate power amplifier, then you need to have pre outs for the front left right channel, at least in the AV receiver. Similarly, if you want to upgrade yourself from a 5.1.2 to a 7.1.2 or 7.2.4 setup, then you would definitely need extra channels either in the amplification or again in the pre out section in the AV receiver. Now, if these seven steps help you identify the right AV receiver for your home theater experience, then share that model number in the comments box below. And to those of you who want to buy these AV receivers or want to know some of the most amazing prices wherein you can buy this, then use the link in the description so that my team can share some of the crazy prices to all of you. That's it from my end. I, Tanmay Mehta, your home cinema consultant or home theater wale bhaiya. We'll see you again in the next video. Thank you.